Hi guys and welcome to my build update number one for the Ravel 148 scale Mosquito Mark IV. Uh, this is my entry into Tim Edwards' Brit 48 group build that he's hosting on Facebook and here on YouTube. If you're not a member of the Brit 48, there's a link down below that you can click on to go to the Brit 48 Facebook page. Uh, feel free to join in. I'm sure Tim will be happy to have you on board. All right, so what have I done? Uh, this kit is an original 1966 tooling, so it's 52-year-old tooling. This is a, a re-box, a new box, but they never modified the tool. It's still the existing tool that's uh, producing the mouldings contained within the kit. And with an old kit like that, 52 years old, you expect that there's not going to be a lot of detail. So I thought, it's an opportunity to do some scratch build and try and enhance the kit, make it look a little more decent. So what did I do? Let's show you. All right, first thing I did was on the wings. This is the uh, starboard side wing, S for starboard. This was just a hole, hole for the wheel well. That hole just went right through, nothing in there, nothing at all, and no separate parts to build in there to make a um, wheel bay. So what I've done there is I put two end um, walls in, bulkheads, put a floor in, and um, I did all the side ribbon as well. Give that some detail. And also, you got the radiator at the front here. You got an opening in the wing. But you look through to see the radiator. Now there's a gap above the radiator because the radiator stops there, you see it's grey. And what I've done is added some white card on there so it comes flush to stop any gaps. And also on the back of the radiator you see the back side of the radio when you look radiator when you're looking through the vent on the underside of the wing. It it was just a big hole. So I put that piece of card in to represent the back side of the radiator. And also, as we looked in the front, there was a gap there looking into the um, into the nacelle, which didn't look good. So I also put a end wall there to close that gap. I'll stick pictures up um, so you can see this closer in detail. Um, maybe I'll shift the camera so I can fit it in the corner over there. I can put pictures here. Alright, so that's what I did on the wings. So one, two, three, four, five, six parts plus all the separate rib parts. They're all separate pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen pieces on each side. Thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, forty pieces. Separate pieces of styrene card cut to do that. But I'm happy with the way it looks. It looks a lot better than an empty hole going straight through. And as you can see, I also decided that from the solid, I'd cut out the flap areas, top and bottom. It leaves these gaps, which I'm going to fill with some styrene card. And, um, but now, what I did is I glued those together I measured that distance to get the correct height here, filled it in with styrene card, and then filled the ends in with styrene card as well. So now when they go on there, oh, yeah. I can pose the flaps down like that. There's the other flap for the middle. I can pose that one down as well. It'll look a lot better than how it did with solid. I can pose that down. So that's that. And here's one that I've taped together on the port side. You can see the flaps taped in position, showing how they'll look. And again, these gaps between the two wings will be filled with card. Just to close that off. All right, so that's the wings. Now onto the undercarriage. The undercarriage, I'll show you a picture of what it looks look like. But the undercarriage has been extensively modified. 
I've chopped the bottoms off. There was a straight horizontal uh, strut that came off the bottom of these struts. And, uh, and that was it. And then a triangular shape. It was just a small triangle. Well, that's not correct. These struts are supposed to go down to the wheel bay floor. And there's two sets of struts like that. And then there's a, uh, there's a hydraulic cylinder on one side, which is towards the inside of the plane, towards the fuselage, that actuates these uh, struts. Also, I've added cross members there. They don't exist with a kit. So I've added extra struts. I've added these um, cross members that give it strength. And um, so that looks a lot better when it goes into a that goes in there like that and now you can see that the struts go down to the floor and that's set at the correct angle so a much improved wheel bay and much improved undercarriage there's a bar that I've got to put across there that the mudguard fits to the bar doesn't come with a kit, I'm going to be scratch building that as well uh, and that will finish off the wheel assembler. But that will be done at the final assembler, all these parts will be painted separately before final assembler. What else doesn't come with a kit? Just inside, just uh, beneath here on the Mosquito there's an oil tank and Nothing comes with a kit. It was just, as I say, it was just an old. So what I've done is I've scratch built the oil tanks that fit underneath here into the wheelbase. So here's one of those. Um, oil tanks, I've got two of those. I sandwiched four pieces of one millimeter styrene card, CVA, uh, CA glue then shape them with a file to get the rounded form and then stuck on the uh, fuel caps top and bottom one's an inlet one's an outlet and then there's a little viewing window I think that is at the bottom so you can see when the level of the oils drop down and then there's a little oil pipe on the top there for connecting to the hose so that's going to go in there as well. You can see pictures now of that in place, temporarily located. Second undercarriage, you can see is underway. I've built the side struts. They'll go together. And then I've got to put the cross members in. I've got to put the cross bar for the um, mudguard. All right, so that's wheel bays and flaps and undercarriage all modified to improve this kit so what did I do with the cockpit so let's take this apart there was no detailed bomb bay all it was was a flat piece of styrene with a couple of pegs off for locating bombs four bombs and um, cameras moved there were four pegs that located four bombs and uh, I didn't like that because it left holes at the end of the bulkheads no bulkheads so you could see into the fuselage so the first thing I did was add the bulkheads each end to close the ends I then chopped out the middle because inside there on a mosquito you have the uh, fuel tanks there's a couple of fuel tanks so I chopped that out, put a separator ribbon and a floor in, and then I built um, I built two fuel tanks with the fuel connect pipes. If I take these off the cocktail sticks, I could connect them like that, and I can drop them into their locations like that so now I've got two fuel tanks and they're like a whole red a brick sort of red whole red color 
So they'll be painted and put in at final assembly because all the inside of this will be green. So now I've got fuel tanks, I've got a completed Bombay. I'm going to be put in, I've put stiffener ribs up there, there'll be a couple more. And off those stiffener ribs I'll be putting blocks for locating the actuators for the Bombay doors each end. So they'll be scratch build at the final assembler. And then let me take this apart now so you can see. I'll take this out. So there he is. Now we've closed off each end. Also in the cockpit area, what I've done there is I raised the floor here, put a floor there, and you'll see why I did that. Chop the floor out here for the access, because I've, what I've done in the fuselage, um, you'll see I've cut out a doorway, and when that was located, you can see if the floor wasn't dropped, the existing floor cut right across where the doorway is. So, and now you can see why that floor is raised there, so it closes off the bulkhead in the nose part. So I've improved the cockpit, I've added that access panel, I've added the access door in the nose, and you can see I've started to put some little consoles, instrument panels uh, inside the wall there. There's also one going to go across the top of the door, which I've built, I'll show you in a minute. And I also decided to put in a gun bay. So, um, chopped out the panels, put in some gun barrel, uh, not the barrels, the back end of the guns, the bodies, and I put in the four magazine cartridges there. So a lot of enhancing going on with this kit. All this is all fresh, the bulkheads front and back, and uh, magazine boxes, and what you can see there now is that. So what did we do inside this fuselage? There were through holes here where the wings go, just big apertures, so I closed them off with styrene. You can see there there's a little uh, instrument box there. So now, What goes on the top, there's an housing that goes on the top here with the radios on. That didn't have any bulkheads at the ends, so it was kind of floated, awkward. So now I've done that, bulkhead front and back. I can locate that. That drops down on that ledge there, so it's nicely located. And if I put that in there now. Okay, I'll put that in there. You're supposed to do this with one half, not both halves closed like I'm doing it at the minute. But there you go, I'm going to take that up. But now you can see how that will look. It's all closed off now, can't see into the fuselage. And if we put the nose on, there we got the door going onto the step looking into the cockpit. What else did I do? All right, here's the door, scratch built the door. You can see I've formed it. It's a little door handle there on the front side, on the back side. I put an, an inner skin and some ribbon and then there's a handle there. It goes that way when it's open. That's top, that's bottom. And there's a pocket there that they put I don't know, maybe a mapping or flight uh, instructions. So that's that, and here are the panels that cover the gun bay. Oh, wrong side, that goes that side. You can see pictures, I'll show it all in pictures. But when you cut bits of styrene out, obviously you lose the thickness of the blade that you're cutting with, so you have to fill those gaps with bits of styrene card by stuck it on the cut edges 
and then file in till you get the fit right. There'll be a slideshow at the end so you can see all the images, still images. So that's that. Now what else needs to be done in the cockpit? I needed another radio that sits behind the pilot seat. Pilot seat will get there, navigator seat, and that radio sits on there. So I've scratch built that radio. And also, scratch built instrument panel that goes above the door. So that will be going just there above the door. And then also I scratch built the um, throttle housing. Put the throttles there. And that will be something that's added last and that will be going in that space there. Just there. So that will be glued in when everything's painted and that's painted and then it'll be glued in space before I glue the nose onto the cockpit. So there we go, little instrument panels, throttle housings, um, the radio, fuel tanks, door, oil tanks, all the nose end, modified scratch built, cockpit redone. Bomb bay redone and wheel bays redone. Now I did the seats as well. The seats were just a flat plastic back and a flat plastic base. Very, very minimalist. All right, if it was a Japanese plane, that's a minimalist joke, but this isn't a Japanese plane. So here's the pilot seat. I added the uh, bucket seat walls Front, back and, uh, front and sides and then put in the seat cushion, the back cushion and then armrests as well and I'll be scratch building some seat belts uh, at the final assembly before I close everything up once this is all painted then uh, put the seat belts in and then I have the navigator flight engineer seat the grey is what what existed so I then built the padded seat and the padded back so now we have a couple of seats that are more representative of what they look like in a mosquito um, oh forgot these pieces these pieces there's two racks here that are painted aluminum and they go across the uh, fuel tanks and then the bombs sit above these. I scratch built those as well. All right, so a lot of scratch building going on guys, but it's gonna make it look so much better. Flaps down, I've also on the horizontal stabilizers, I cut the flaps, uh, the elevators out of solid, and uh, I've glued those in a downward slope. So they're posed now instead of straight. Doing what I can to enhance this kit. Now, that's that. But how else could I enhance this? Now I've got into it, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I thought I was taking it even a step further. And how could I do that? Well, let's take this apart and I'll show you something I was checking to see if it fits. Oh, what's that? LED light. Yeah, I'm going to cut holes in the lights, put the lenses on, paint the lenses, the colour, and illuminate them with LEDs. 
The LEDs back here doesn't go all the way up because the, th the wing gets too thin here and that's the closest I can get that allows the wing to close up. I've got the landing lights here so I'm going to have an LED there illuminating landing lights, illuminating the navigation lights and let me show you something else in this little box. Battery packs. And what else do we have in the box? Oh, motors. I'm also going to spin the propellers. So this is going to be a um, motorized propellers, both propellers, all lights illuminated, wingtip navigation lights, the underside wing landing lights, and also on the tail, the white light on the tail is going to be illuminated. And are there any other lights? I think that's it. So there'll be one, two, three in each wing, the tail light. That's seven lights, two propellers. I'm going to actuate and <clears throat> so take it to the next level. What else can I do? Well, I could put it on a nice diorama base, but it might look boring if there's nothing else going with it. So what can we put with it? Well, I ordered some oil drums and jerry cans and sacks, sand bags, etc. So I can now add that. This is the Tamiya kit military miniature series. So I'm going to add some of those. And I thought, how about some vehicles or a vehicle? I've got a choice of some vehicles. This is the utilitaire, the Tilly light utility, the commonly called the Tiller. Showing an American finish here, but you do have the options for a British finish. There we go, RAF. I also bought, this is all 148 scale to go with the aircraft. Also bought the Albion 3 point fueler. Now there's a good reason I bought this. Now you see these hoses, fuel hoses. What could I do with those? Hmm. I could remove those. I could put the battery pack inside this uh, fueler. Put a switch inside the door on the back. I can put the cables in place of these coming down and take the cables in through the uh, fuel points, the entry points on the wings. So I can put a positive in one side, negative in the other, and then connect from there to the lights and the motors. That's what I'm thinking about using my oil, uh, my, my fuel truck as the, uh, the, the, um, the battery hold up and power point with the switch. It's an idea, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to pull it off, but we'll see. If not, I'll do the usual thing and put the battery pack inside the base. I'll make it a deep base. I also got the 148 Bedford MWD, so I've got a choice of using that one as well. Well, we're going to need figures. So I got the Eddard 148 RAF World War II personnel. Comes with six figures. And there's some other things in there, I believe. Uh, it comes with. But now I've got figures. But I wanted a choice of figures, so I bought the uh, ICM kit. There's seven figures in this one. Includes a dog as well. Two pilots, a woman officer, uh, some guys working on the aircraft, and a pilot looking like he's getting into the aircraft there. So I've got 13 figures basically between those two kits. Bought two packs of LEDs, and the reason I got two is. Some are static and some are flashing. And some are diffused and some are clear. But these are all three millimeter LEDs. Come in white, green, red, yellow, blue. 
So I've got a good choice of LED and there's a thousand LEDs in the pack for $11.99. I thought that was a steal. And the motors, this set with the motors, the battery holders, uh, clips for the motors, uh, some tubing to cover the points, the joins, to protect the cables, and then switches as well. That was uh, $8.99. Unbelievable. Really cheap. Here's the second set of uh, LEDs. These are 3mm and 5mm again. Um, some are diffused on this one, I believe. And one kit, the other kit, or is it this kit? It's not this kit. This kit, if I open it, comes with a little printed circuit board so you can test stuff on. Also comes with three sets of transistors, resistors, sorry, transistors, resistors. I got some electrical tape as well. And I think that's it. That's it guys. So I'm not gonna waffle on anymore, but you can see, I'm gonna show you a slideshow now so you can see all those modifications in close up. But you can see I'm getting carried away with this build. I've enjoyed doing all this scratch build into an old 52 year old kit. I really enjoy it. And uh, it's gonna make this model what would have looked detailless, built straight out of the box, look a little more pleasing to the eye. Also forgot to mention I cut out the rudder so I can pose that now as well. But the rear light will be tail will be cut off there, put a rear light in there, carry a lead down there. That's it. And there, all the other parts, rockets built up onto their, uh, their rails, the bombs are all built up. On cocktail sticks, ready for uh, priming and painting. All right, guys, I'm not gonna bore you anymore. That's my extensive first update, number one, for the uh, Revell 148 scale Diavolin Mosquito Mark IV. And if you've stuck with me this long, 27 minutes so far, thank you. And if you're gonna stick around for the slideshow at the end to see everything in close-up detail, then thanks again. Until the next update, where I hope to have this, the cockpit all primed, painted, and sealed up and maybe the wings and horizontal stabilizers in place ready for priming, pre-shading and painting. Till then guys, thanks for watching, thanks for any comments. Tallyo, chocks away.